I thought maybe what I might do is just talk a little bit about what's going on, you know, under the surface of reality, and then maybe talk a little bit about the transformation process and just uh, summarize a bit so we can relate to what's been happening in, in our own individual lives. And then especially we can tune in on this whole COVID thing and this time period and what this is all about, um, kind of get current with things. Um, but I, I feel like for many years that we've had this thing, I always call it the acceleration, you know, and it, it's just that the frequency on the planet seems to have just been going up and up and up and up and up. And um, I think that's proven out a lot with, if you track the Schumann resonance, you know, from the center, I, which I think is the, the vibration between the center of the earth and the ionosphere. Um, but, you know, it used to be seven point something or other, and, and then it went to like 15. And I haven't checked it lately, but a friend told me it's just been off the charts recently really high it spikes you know it goes 50 100 and something like that um so but it's just been steadily increasing and of course what that does because it is the vibration of the physical world that is also affecting the vibration of our bodies because they're physical we're part of that and as the body increases in vibration you know it does that in order to harmonize with the rest of the field and and as you start to go up in frequency you know there's an old resting rate you know that we're comfortable at that that uh, was the old normal i guess you would say and as it goes up then we we have natural resistance to it at first and then of course it causes these symptoms in the body so I mean, I'm sure you've all experienced some of them. It could be like overheating, getting rashes, having your heart pound for no reason, um, feeling extra hot, feeling um, e extremely nervous and agitated and sort of hyper. And of course, we're all getting ultra sensitive to all kinds of things now because we're, it's just, you know, we're just becoming extra um, vibratory, <laughs> you know? And so... Uh, and some of these things really can make you feel uh, highly disturbed, you know. And I think a lot of our road rage and and short fuses and stuff like that is part of this. But you have to let the body, the body will adapt. You just have to relax. And uh, I find that in the early stages of it, I, I used to feel like I had to take a nap in the afternoon. Like I just had to get my mind out of the way. And then the body could do its thing um, or eat a lot of carbohydrates, you know, is the other, <laughs> is what I would do. <laughs> but um, so the body goes up in frequency and then what happens, it keeps, it gets higher and higher. And that means that we are actually sort of eclipsing a bit the vibration of fear. And that means that the subconscious mind where all of those old fear, memories and wounds and things we never wanted to look at again were stuffed you know we pushed them down in frequency so that we didn't have to have them in our conscious mind but now that vibration of the subconscious mind has also gotten faster so that means the old fear stuff can't stay there anymore and so it pops up to the surface kind of like a popcorn you know and and what happens then is the old memory patterns or even I would say they're almost like physical patterns too. They're like uh, certain states of being and contracted states. Well, they pop up into the conscious mind, which is really your daily reality. You know, it's what you're conscious of. And then what happens is that that stuff reenacts. It comes up in front of you again, you start to feel it, and often you get an experience in the world that mirrors that original experience. And then, you know, your left brain goes, oh no, not that again. I'm gonna push it back down. I'm gonna try to get rid of it. And so many different techniques we have from the left brain. Oh, let's, I'll distract myself. I'll leave my body, you know, I'll get into some goal orientation or an addiction or, you know, whatever. <laughs> There's so many ways that we avoid things. And, uh, 
So, uh, you know, this is all part of the transformation process is that the, the higher the frequency, then the less able we are to hold any kind of programming or old patterns that are based in a low vibration, right? And, and part of that is, I think it's a little bit the fault of the left brain, even though the left brain is not a bad guy, but it is the place where we um, make things conscious and label them and make uh, definitions. And then we kind of get stuck in those. You know, the left brain says, well, I already figured this one out and it's such and such. And then we can create belief systems around that and rules. And, and then we're right. You know, especially if we identify then with the left brain, that becomes ego. And then we're stuck. And, um, and so it's very hard to become fluid again, because the more you contract into fixed ideas and, and avoidance of emotion, negative emotion, the less energy flows through you. And then the, the less energy that flows, the, the less you're able to adapt to the new frequencies. Does that all make sense, what I'm saying so far? Okay. Um, so there's, there's this process of dealing with the subconscious stuff. And I think that's, I call this the bridge time. You know, we are really in the middle between the old reality, which to me is linear. You know, it's cause and effect thinking, it's beginning, middle, end, past, present, future. You know, uh, that way of thinking is the way we've been thinking on Earth for a gazillion years. Uh, and, and it's a weird way of thinking. It's left brain um, perception where you have a, an event, uh, then a goal over here. And then there's like this imaginary empty space in between that you have to then cross with willpower and cleverness and all these mechanisms that we come up with to get to that place or to get that goal to happen. And then you have to keep that, you know, you can't let it go because now you're at, your identity is attached to what you create. So it's a lot of um, effort and willpower and you get very drained by doing that. And it takes a long time for things to happen because you have this illusion of gaps between things. You see how that slows down the materialization of things in the world. Um, so that is old, it's too slow, and that's the information age, right? It's where we're processing data bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, and it really does take a long time. And since there's so much information now, you can't do it that way anymore. So we are being forced into our right brain and this is the beginning of the intuition age, you know, where, so we're not leaving the left brain. Like I said, it's not a bad guy. You know, I think the function of the left brain is to interrupt the right brain because the right brain is like this total immersion into the unified field. You become one with everything. And then all knowledge is there. The imaginal realm is at your beck and call, you know, and, um, but you don't know you have a self, <laughs> you know, you're just merged with everything. So it's the function of the left brain to say, Hey, look at this. And now we have a specific focal point and that can now come into physical reality, you know? So, uh, but you know, then it gets to be sort of uh, bossy, I guess, you know, and thinks it's in charge of everything. And then we get caught up in ego. So we have to learn now a way of, Moving to the right brain, which is, of course, no language. The, the left brain is all about language. So if you're talking in your head or whatever, you're still in your left brain. As soon as you shift over and get centered and quiet and stop the internal dialogue, you can start shifting into the right brain and, and intuition, which is also a kind of direct knowing. Um, and it's, it's about that simple, really. You just have to then place attention into that silence and feel into that experience there that you were calling the inner self or whatever you, you like. <clears throat> but it's the being and it's the being with its presence. 
And as you do that, you expand. And now you get this idea that reality is a ball around you. You know, it is, um, you're in the center, you never leave the center, and the ball expands and contracts um, depending on whatever your scope wants to be. Um, and so you can expand way out and include the Akashic records, you know, or the, you know, high dimensions. And you can come back down in and do something at your desk, you know, that's really finite. And we do this all day long and all night long. We have zones we move in and out through. Physical, etheric, lower, men lower emotional, upper emotional, lower mental, upper mental, you know, causal all out, you know, we're in and out all the time. You know, when you space out during the day, you're probably accessing information from a higher level and then you suddenly show back up in, in your body again and uh, okay, I brought that back with me. So, so the, the transformation process really, really is about the move to the right brain, which is then holistic, and then we realize the body is conscious. It's a kind of brain. The organs know things. The cells know things. And it doesn't stop at the skin because we are vibration-based beings. And that every particle is like a little white hole where energy is coming out and then radiating. Out of each particle, everything's radiating everywhere. <laughs> you know. So it's just a, a field full of light and vibration which doesn't end at your skin because the air is vibrating. So there is no gap anymore. So everything now gets drawn into the present moment because the ball is the present moment, your reality ball, you know, and this is the spherical reality. And this is the reality of intuition and the right brain where everything is present with you all the time. Whatever you place attention on comes forth to be with you and actually materialize. Whatever you take attention out of dissolves back into the field. So attention is the primary skill that is going to be used in the intuition age. All right, so, but going back to dealing with the subconscious, you know, um, the work of the bridge time is to clear ourselves of contraction, calcification, <laughs> you know, old ideas, habits, belief systems, even our personal story in a way. Just don't be attached to it because you're much freer when you don't, you know, adhere to some little scenario because then you could have any scenario. And uh, it's almost like you, you do start to clear these fear things by, um, merging into them to see what caused that oh i was two years old and this my i walked in out in the street and my mother screamed at me you know and, and i like or you inhale and forget to exhale you know there's some million things like that where we said oh i better be this way or else and you got your temporary um survival mechanisms let's say do you know where um, and, and I do remember going back into my programming and saying, well, okay, I'll do this to get along and be, you know, safe and be fed, you know, but I'm not going to do this forever. Later on, I'm going to bring through my own ideas again and um, revise everything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but we do do these agreements with the people around us when we're very little, when we don't have a lot of presence of mind. But anyway, the more you go in and see what the thing was all about, that what I have found is all the old programming and fears are about partial perception. You didn't see the whole picture. You didn't see it from the soul's eye view. You know, you were caught in this um, unconscious kind of pro, um, perception. And you know, the, the left brain then said, okay, this is the way it has to be. So, but because everything's vibrating so fast right now, um, and the acceleration has not stopped, that's for sure. It's just gotten more intense. 
uh, that it's much easier to clear this stuff because everything now has been kind of swallowed up by this vast present moment. The past is in the present moment, the future is in the present moment. So that in a way, there's no future anymore. There are potential realities that are in the ball with you. And, and there's lots of them. You could choose one that you like, you know, and it's just at a different frequency of the one you're in now. So if you could raise your vibration up to the frequency and match that of that particular reality and kind of merge with it, you, it would happen. That easy. You don't have to take all the steps and put in your dues and prove yourself and everything to get there anymore. Right? Um, so everything is happening fast because it's in the present moment. And, you know, as we're transforming, we're starting to realize that, that the old linear reality is just outdated. And the ego is outdated. It doesn't work. It's too slow. It gets in the way. And we don't want things to get in the way. We want, like, I wanted my computer speed to just fix itself, you know, <laughs> I don't have to go through all these steps. But anyway, um, so... Are you following me? Because I'm kind of rattling on here. Okay. Uh, so, so part of this transformation then is the clearing of the old stuff that Pandora's box has opened. All this stuff is fl fluttering around. But so yours is is in your field, but so is everybody else's, right? The, we are swimming around right now in this big sea of junk, you know, of everybody's fears. And, you know, the thing about it is when fear starts to show up, it always comes up with, with polarity. It's good and bad. It's me and them. It's inside, outside. And there's always something that you have to be wary of that could hurt you. Or you have to either be dominant or dominate by being a victim. Try to control reality by one of those positions that's ego again you know and that is fear-based thinking so we have to not be dominators or victims we have to just go back into the center place get in your sort of home frequency state and be yourself simple as that be clear and realize hey i'm the soul and i'm here right now I'm looking out from these eyes. I'm in charge. And do this again and again and again and again until your body recognizes the vibration of the soul as the guide. And th as you saturate with that, uh, your life will shift pretty dramatically. And you'll get increased synchronicity, instantaneous results, I mean, even instantaneous healing I'm seeing now a lot that just shift, shift the inner blueprint, right? The energy pattern and the physical will almost immediately line up with that and shift itself. Um, so, you know, I've seen tumors dissolve in things like that. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, if you're thinking negatively, you'll get a reality that lets the like that. Yeah. Um, so it's so important right now what the way you think and feel and what you broadcast and what you hold as real. Uh, because if you backslide into the fear based thinking and linear reality, uh, you're going to slow down your your process and be sort of uh, trapped, you know, in in the polarity stuff. Um, and if you resist those who are the dominators today, you're just trapped in it. So it's not about being good or bad, it's about being in the truth, you know? Um, so this is our habit, I think now, of we're in the clearing part of the process. And that's what, you know, I wrote the book Transparency, and that a lot of that is about how do we get clear and what happens to us then when you're transparent 
you allow yourself to be seen for anything that you have because everything's human you know it's if we're confused everybody can be confused it's not not a big deal and also we're all magnificent so you might as well let that be seen too and when you you open up and relax about that and you let yourself be seen then magically you can see everything <laughs> it's like it works both ways you can see through the surface illusions of whatever's around you and especially if you're not judgmental about it because people aren't going to be judgmental toward you so you're not going to be it toward the world and then things really open up um, and you know so you don't have to suppress the negative stuff anymore just let it be there's messages in it there's teachings in it and it can clear very quickly as soon as you get the understanding it's like ding and then it dissolves and goes back into the field you were holding energy into a certain pattern that uh, took a lot of energy to hold it in that pattern and it wasn't fun it was like we're addicted to misery or something you know and so that's <laughs> like let it go and i always say you know self-entertainment is a very high state <laughs> that that it helps you get into joy and when you're in that state your mind is open and you can access from the right brain translate that over to the left brain get meaning say aha but don't lock it down then you go back to the right brain access new stuff whatever wants to come through bring it over aha go back you know and there's this kind of round trip that we are doing now so we give the the physical world permission to materialize any way it wants to depending on the way we are holding energy and the kind of consciousness we are identifying with i suppose you know um, so there's there's really a sense of um, trusting trusting the process of materialization and dematerialization, if that makes sense. That your attention and your frequency creates an experience for you in the physical world, and it then saturates out through the field around you. And therefore then your whole reality ball is filled with that particular frequency and then it acts like a set of instructions to the unified field so that the people who show up in your life come out of that vibration they actually emerge you don't attract anything anymore because there's no outside world to attract it from it just they just show up out of the frequency that's like magic and then when when the souls are finished working together they just you know move on or they just move out of the the, the mutual inclusion of each other's fields so um, and then i think that we're starting to see that some of these signs of soul consciousness are taking place like for instance if you hold your home frequency steady enough and saturate with it and then the people show up out of it and they're doing the same thing you start to have your soul group materialize people on your wavelength you know and then you find out oh maybe there's a project we want to do together and oh you've got that piece of the puzzle and i've got this piece of the puzzle and these things start to fall together with these um i it's like a, a i call it the convening you know where the people are coming together in order to do some work on the planet to really change the consciousness so that the whole planet can shift and i think that's what we're headed toward um and and it's it's like i'm seeing like especially now that zoom is happening there are so many people i'm meeting through zoom and, and then somebody says oh would you like to do a podcast on this series of seven things on New, new business and new marketing okay let's do that you know so there are like these little i was calling it co-marketing it's like in, it's not like affiliate programs it's like oh i'll do this with you i'll do this with you i'll do this with you and then and that things start to build up into this larger flow you know and it's all because we just want to work together 
it's it's often not really even for money. It's just because we like being with each other, you know. So um, why don't I just pause there for a minute? We can talk some, and and then I if I have more stuff, I'll throw it in. How about that? That sounds awesome. Okay, Thank you, Penny, that was great. Uh, so many. Um, as Kristen said in the group chat, truth bumps. <laughs> so that was that was fantastic. I'm gonna um open it up to our group because I know so many people came to to hear you. So if anyone has any questions or just want to sh wants to share on how Penny's message related to them, just uh, throw up your hand and I'll unmute you. Oh, I see Bob. Yeah. Yeah. That is just. Hi Penny, that's a great discussion, and um, and it's a, a a whole new. It's kind of a cool shift of um, of of the law of attraction, but mm -hmm. it's kind of a whole new take on it. It's like a mm -hmm. uh, kind of interesting to to hear that, and uh, yeah, you know, energy and particles of what we're made out of, and and also uh, understanding that you're, you're you're you know you're looking out of your eyes. You know? mm -hmm. It's amazing that that doesn't jump between mm -hmm. person to person, but um, but you, you mentioned something about like uh, how how the world's becoming, um, or if you put yourself out there with a certain type of activity, how 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 you attract, um, you know, positive thoughts and and collaborative uh, things. Like I'm doing the pepper, I, I'm a I'm, I'm doing pepper plants and stuff like that. And I'm actually going out and decided to grow 1200 plants and see if I can uh, market and sell them. And, and I, I did that. And, but what happened is I've, I've connected to so many people out there that they're starting to, to uh, communicate back with ideas. Um, I know what I'm, what I'm putting forth as far as what, what, what I've been uh, growing and, and, and I'm all done for the season, but I'm not marketing right now. Uh, but the, the, um, the, the positive thoughts that have come back, you know, people just trying to help. I mean, it, just just by and it's it's a total total new, new thing for me. I don't I don't sell stuff like that. So this is a total new thing where now I'm getting a lot of feedback in this in this in that vein as far as how to make things better, how to do things, and what what can people do to help you. It's kind of a right. neat and you know and you know. Put, put forth positive messages and, and you get a lot of stuff back in this, in this day and age. Right, of, right. Yeah. Well, it's because it's on the same frequency, right? And yeah. so, yeah, so it's, you're talking about getting, going out and coming back and that's a little bit in the linear reality, right? Yeah. So think of it instead as like, I have established this vibration of generosity and warmth and I'm having fun and then the other people pick up on that and they just show up out of that reality and are there talking the same way you're talking. Right. You know, yeah. it's yeah. not, it's, they're the same as you, mm. you know? And it's, so it's, so it's it, interesting to try to shift your mind into um, language where we're talking instead of linear language, we're talking spherical language all at mm. once in the present moment, no outside world, because the ball just imaginary ball expands and includes something new and then you think you've gone over there but no it's still inside you you know mm. that's a it's like we're reprogramming our brain too to think in this new perception yeah, yeah. but that's, it's a great example bob of of the whole thing i was just describing yeah, yeah. connected right there when, when you started talking about the uh the messages, you know, like attract, not necessarily attracting, but all of a sudden you're, you're just sitting there and all of a sudden there ding, they ding, are. your phone's going off. It's like, <laughs> that's interesting. It's like, you know, you put forth some challenges and let people know, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, here's my plant. I don't really like the root structure. I don't really, I, I think I can do better. I can do it. And then all of a sudden, all this stuff starts coming in. And I now I have, uh, next year I'll be, you know, I, I might be global <laughs> next year as a result of what. <laughs> Because, because, because of packaging, I, I, I can ship now. How can I ship? I, I, I needed to get some information and it shoots in at me. It's like, oh, this is going to be easy. 
So, um, so it, all that stuff, it, it's like, it's not a competition world. It's like a collaborative world. That's right. In, especially in plants right. and, and gardening and, and mm. how the fact that there's probably triple the number of gardeners out there as a result of a negative. Everybody's growing stuff. Of course, mm -hmm. you go to the store and try to buy fertilizer. It gets a little challenging. It's never been challenging before, but um, it's, it's, it's amazing. So it's, Everyone right. should get into it. <laughs> <laughs> great, great stuff, Penny. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love Thank it. You. Thank right. you. Thank you, Bob and Vicki. Yep. Uh, anyone else want to share? Oh, I see Kristen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Penny. That was amazing. So, so many beautiful words that resonate so deeply with my own soul. And I, I took a couple notes um because they they made so much sense and i just wanted to reference them again um referencing the soul self as the core self and when you can continuously check in with that how the world kind of changes around you without effort it just happens as the result of the internal shift mm -hmm. and you know even what you said about the group like the soul tribe just kind of like emerging out of the ethers and just showing up around you. Mm -hmm. I felt like you were speaking specifically to me and my journey because that's how it was. And even what Joe said earlier about feeling like you're the only person who like is into this stuff. And so I spent like, you know, nine years in my basement, like reading every single book I could <laughs> about like vibrational medicine and law of attraction and frequency and higher consciousness. And it was almost like as soon as I stayed so connected to that, no matter what, that soul self that said, I'm going to be this no matter what, all of a sudden the quantum healing collective just like manifested all these people just showed up and, and they were doing it too. And it's, we were all like, Oh my God, like we've been doing this. And it was, I felt like you were speaking just to our group so beautifully. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was amazing. I can't wait to read. I'm going to order all your books today. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it is amazing. And, and it's what I find about the new perception is it's ironic. Everything that you thought was true in the old perception is almost like the opposite in the new one. Everything you thought was hard is easy, you know, um, you know, like finding the right person as your life mate or something, you know, so, oh gosh, now that I'm, more conscious nobody else is out there that's going to match me but the fact is you stand out more you're 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 above all the garbage you know down below and so it's actually easier there's all kinds of things like that i used to think that i had to like like for instance know every kind of plant's name like know every detail about everything and i was into like this collecting of detail and then one day i just had this like brain freeze it said just stop that you already know everything just relax you don't have to hold it you know it's all there whatever you need it's like i always liken it now to the pantry with all the ingredients in there if i'm going to bake a cake you know i get the flour i get the sugar i get the there's all the everything i need is there i use it and then i put it back on the pantry shelf and it's always there i can pull it back out anytime i want so you don't have to hold because it comes to you when you need it, you know? Um, it, it was like, I can know more by not trying to know more, <laughs> you know? So this new consciousness is, I mean, people are afraid of letting go of their old habits. And I'm thinking, why? Because it's so much more fun this other way. You know, like, oh, I'll let go. I'm not going to hold on to my story of why I'm, uh, I got abused as a child and then blah, 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 and da, 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 uh, because it's a wonderful drama, you know, and it, it, it's titillating. Um, but do I really want to be that? And if I let go of my story, I won't be anyone. No, you'll be anything you want. <laughs> Other, somebody else, Lisa? You know, too, that you can hit your space bar and hold it down in order to unmute yourself. Did you yeah. all thank do that? You, thank you okay. so much, Penny, for that. Yeah. That was amazing. I took a bunch of notes. And um, I'd love to hear what, 
what you can say on healing racism and right now in the world we're seeing so much that it's not enough to be not racist we must be anti-racist and there's you know a call for each one of us to like really stand up and voice when we see it and i would love to just hear your perspective on it yeah um i think it's part of the clearing process that people who've who've been abused especially like black people and and brown skinned people and whatever but women too uh you know there's all kinds of of groups subgroups that have not had full on soul consciousness and then get stuck in these old restricted identities and then they think they have to fight to get out of them you know and be angry to get out of them um, so, you know, part of it, I think, is education to see that maybe there's there that the attracting of attention is important in the beginning. And that's what like these demonstrations are doing. It's like, let's get people to really realize how serious this is. But then you can't keep on that way. Then it's more like, and do I want to live in this energy all the time and be an angry you know, reactive, rebellious person constantly. So what then is the spiritual path forward through that, which is be the soul. When you are being your soul, then you see the soul in other people. You don't see the skin necessarily as any big factor. You look in and you see who they are, what they're built for, what their role is, what they want to do, you know, what their potential is. You see their vulnerabilities even, you know, and then you can offer help. But it has, it doesn't matter what anybody looks like, our shapes. But then those shapes and those forms become so interesting, that diversity part becomes like really fun. You know, and then you want to know all the different kinds of consciousness that people have, you know. And uh, so I don't think it's a, a, a short problem to solve necessarily but i think that it starts with what's happening now as a really strong focal point but then it needs to widen out other groups have to come in and say yeah women i've been abused i've been treated badly i've been you know women did that with the me too movement but that kind of faded down that could come back up asians you know, Native Americans, for goodness sake, you know, there's so, so many things. Um, you know, I was discriminated against when I worked in Japan because I was blonde, <laughs> you know, and a woman uh, and young. I couldn't know anything because I, was, I wasn't old enough. Uh, you know, so it happens to everybody. I guess I just feel like we have to broaden it out. Does that make sense? And then find the universality in that and then stop identifying with the negative part just get over it you know and move on and just start to be yourself and empower yourself but how long will that take i'm not sure you know but, but i think that's the pathway does that resonate with you it does, does that, yeah any any yeah, thank you i just um just one more question that was that was perfect so because what i'm seeing is a lot of right in now the way you said it was so perfect of like things, how did you say it? Like just things coming through that, that, that are coming up for healing and, and, and clearing. We're in the clearing process right now. And what I'm seeing when I'm looking at the news and when I'm looking at Facebook and Instagram is a lot of shaming, bullying, blaming, and I, I just loved what you said that the fear equals the polarity and in fear you try to control reality and we cannot be dominators or victims so yeah if there's somebody's calling for me to do something for example like to say so, something like i have to do something like what do you do in that situation like in, in the, whatever it is in your mind your practice to be truly helpful. I mean, I truly, truly want to be listening and I, I want to be 
really just guided, I guess, but sometimes I'm not sure like how to handle some of the shaming, blaming, bullying right. things I'm right. seeing. Right. All I know is to try and provide the, the larger perspective without making the other person feel like I'm ignoring them or belittling them. You know, like I hear you, you know, you have a, a valid point. I can tell you feel this, this is really real. And it has been for a long time. And <laughs> there's, you know, do you want to live in this forever? Or whatever kind of language we can come up with to try to help stretch them, I would call it eclipsing the polarity. You know, so how do you get them to the third point of the triangle that's above the polarized bottom line? You know, so that, that more helicopter view. And then what can you do in your personal self to uh, get out of that negativity? You know, to create positive results. Like, I remember immediately thinking, um, what if the blacks and the police reversed roles what if the blacks were the police how would they solve the problem of you know violence and uh, drugs and all this stuff that were happening in the white community you know and how would the police feel if their kids were being shot at by dr drive-bys or whatever um, you know and i thought well wouldn't it be interesting to find solutions from the other point of view and that would be another way of kind of sort of um, collapsing the polarity, you know. So I think there are ways we can work with um, not feeding energy into the either or, but go into the both and. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. That was um, fantastic. I had a question come in via text. Can, can you ask Penny, how, how did she get interested in this work? So how did you get interested in, in this whole realm? What brought you to this? Ah, uh, I, in high school, I was always reading um, books about psychology and like psychic stuff, like psychic discoveries behind the Iron Curtain. And I thought, oh, the, ooh, this is cool. You can you know, teleport things and <laughs> stuff. Um, but uh, I went to school to be a designer and um, worked with, you know, principles of art and, and organizing things. Um, and it's just kind of interesting. It just unfolded chapter by chapter because there was no way I could grow up to be this in, when I was growing up. They didn't, you couldn't study it. Um, so, uh, it, it was an interesting path. It just like, almost uh, like a destiny thing where I would meet, oh, I went to New York and studied with Hans Holzer, who was this, you know, famous ghost hunter. And then I did this and then this happened. And then I met this person and then went to California and then I did this and I did this and I did. And, um, but I had been very interested in, um, the the design stuff and how uh hmm, how things work really what's the real underpinning of of how things work maximally if you could design it right it would really function well so then i got to northern california and they had classes in clairvoyance development but i had been visual and i thought well that sounds interesting i didn't know you could study that so i went and took these classes and um, it, I was really good at it. And I would actually get symbols and images that were about the other per that were true. And, and my dreams were meaningful, but I didn't know they were meaningful. And, and um, so that got, got me very turned on that I could apply design principles to reading people's lives. Why are they doing what they're doing? Why does it make sense? What's the soul doing? And it just came to me early on that, <clears throat> there's a greater sanity at work. So what is the, 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 the process underlying the outer form that makes sense? Um, so I was always really pretty grounded about all this stuff, not like a woo-woo. Um, and, um, and that evolved. But once I, I really saw that that clairvoyance piece worked and that it wasn't that difficult to just use your imagination, uh, and that you got good information from it, uh, I was hooked. 
I used to go home at Christmas when I was younger and tell my family, I'm going to be a graphic, an interior designer. Okay, next year, I'm going to be a graphic designer. You know, and that, yeah, okay, Penny, okay. And then one year that after that happened, I went home. I know what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a spiritual teacher. And my mother, oh, God, you know. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, it's all an evolution, I guess. It just gets deeper and deeper. <laughs> Thank you. I see how uh, Lauren's hands up, so we'll unmute uh, Lauren. Hi, thank you so much, Penny. That hey. was beautiful. Um, yeah, my question feels so trivial in comparison to the <laughs> ideas about race and how to resolve that. But it's a little bit, it's like a step down, I guess, from that. I really appreciated your description of the right brain being an experience of unity consciousness. I Ha, it's interesting, my own journey, um, in 2016, I suffered the first of a series of concussions. And prior to that, I had been very left brain, very driven, very smart, like almost too smart, um, hyper rational, and, and to the point where when I'd go to see psychologists, actually after the brain injury, they told me that my problem wasn't that I was being irrational, but that I was being too rational. So it was weird, it, 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 but anyway, so since then, even now, I have that tendency, but also what happened, I couldn't read, couldn't write, couldn't do math for a while, a couple of years, and I started getting very interested in color and all these right brain things. And uh, since then, I've, I'm really drawn to it. Like I feel, I just wanna live there. I don't want to be in my left brain anymore, but it's really hard to be an adult without using an adult in our world, right. get your bills paid, do all this stuff mm -hmm. without drawing on that and without feeling productive. And so I've had like anytime an experience comes along that gives me a promise of that sense of unity, I just want to go there. I don't, I don't want to do anything else. It's a little bit like a drug. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was wondering if you have suggestions. Okay, so now where I am in my recovery is more and more of that left brain ability is coming back. I can do my math again. I can do a lot of that stuff. I, um, you know, just as an example, like I can read Russian letters again. I can read the Russian alphabet. I couldn't do that for a long time. Like little things that was, it just showed me my, that part of my brain is off offline right. so now that that side's coming back and the right side seems to be really strong and really powerful and really seductive in comparison i don't want the balance to go in the other direction with the right really strong and the left really weak i mean i do actually because it feels so good but so i'm wondering like i have this image i went paddle boarding for the first time the other day where you have to stand on top of this thing and you're constantly <laughs> shifting your weight back and forth between both sides but if you have a suggestion for someone like me who's kind of in that bridging place like how do i stay grounded and and kind of dip to one side when i need to and dip out without feeling like one side is dominating mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> one thing that popped into my mind was that when you go to do math or look at a language-oriented thing like that, that you feel into each Russian letter or you feel into the, I, the actual experience of, you know, three plus four is seven, that that is an that's not just a, a fast moving thing up in the upper part of the brain. It's actually a reality. And that is more right brained, you know, so if you can penetrate into slow down, right? Cause left brain goes lickety split trying to keep up with everything. So slow down and feel into math, you know, feel into um, pleasure connected with balancing your checkbook. Oh, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? That there's, it's kind of fun to, to fall into the, all the little parts of it. You know, it's not, 
uh, a chore, just like redefine these things for yourself. But also I think it has to do with slowing down and penetrating with your attention into something so that you actually have the feeling state, the, the state of being of what it is. And that gives you pleasure. As, as you get more pleasure, I think you'll balance out the use of both sides of your brain. Oh, that's beautiful. Because also the right brain is giving you color and shapes and stuff, but you're going to want to materialize something using all those things. You know, and then that's where the left brain comes back in. It helps you and step just by step. That process that it will want right. to do it and I don't have to right in the driver's seat of that you don't have to try to balance yourself just feel into things and and then know you'll know them by becoming them really it's have you so read um, jill bolte taylor's book no oh yeah. the, yes my stroke of insight yes yeah um, or yeah she it's really interesting a lot of the stuff she talks about in there of you know, like being in the right brain and stuck in there after, as she's a neuroscientist or whatever yes. she was, um, that, you know, her cells and the stars were the same. She didn't get any difference. It's like the macro micro was all one thing and you couldn't tell any, you couldn't discriminate. It was a deep experiential thing about understanding unity, you know? So uh, I think she's done it really well simple writing, you know, but really good concepts. Yeah, that's a great, because I've had a lot of those experiences actually, really deep. And I had them a little bit before as well. So mm -hmm. I, I know that that's part of my spiritual journey, but um, I love that idea of surrendering to pleasure rather than being driven by the taskmaster. Should, should, should. That's all your should. left brain comes up. Exactly. And so th that really helps me to reorient and accept where I am and trust the process, which is terrifying for the left brain. Right. Well, the left brain think, has to do that. The left nope, brain is right. always should. I have to. Uh, yes, buts, uh, you know, looking for what's wrong with something first, um, yes. you know, and the right brain, it doesn't really talk, but it's more like I'm interested in, I'm curious about, I'm enjoying this. I like the, you know, it's like, a, it's um, connecting, connections, you know, uh, be, becoming one with things, finding similarities. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? So should we talk a minute about um, the pandemic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! um, <laughs> well, I think it's a, a very interesting materialization of a of a thought form of an inner energy blueprint that has been gathering momentum that has a lot to do with dominator victim patterns. You know, as the fear is surfacing, this whole thing of um, you know, we're seeing all the narcissism in the world and politics and so forth. We're seeing all the victimization. We're seeing people saying this is a, um, this is real. It's not real. It's a conspiracy. It's, you know, all this stuff coming up from the left brain to deal with it because people don't want to get quiet and go down deeper into who they really are. They're addicted to dis distracting themselves. And uh, so this forced, you know, separation and uh, what are we calling this uh, quarantine or whatever, um, really is a, a like a meditation time. It's time for simplification and, um, you know, shift from left brain to right brain by going into more into silence, more into slowness. And... Uh, and then the fact that it's happening around the world is like the first time that we have had global consciousness, that there is a, a reality of souls around the world connecting into one way of thinking and being. You know, I don't think 9-11 did that or, you know, other things didn't really do that as well. 
that everybody could relate to it and not just say, oh, it was over there in that country. So this is a phenomenal thing, actually, that is precipitating a great clearing, really a big clearing. And reality will be, I think, quite different after it finishes up its run, and which I don't think is going to be any time really soon. It's probably going to last a year or so. Um, on and off in waves but I feel like uh, I had this vision of that I was diving down through the ocean at a pretty deep level and then suddenly I surfaced like a dolphin or something and I was totally clean like all my sticky stuff from my aura was gone I didn't have anything in my aura it was like just spaciousness and I, you know, I was, it's like being born again or something, you know, but there's just, you're not holding on to anything. And I could feel that I was that way. And I could track backward to see, watch how this whole process was working, that, that it's going to do that for a lot of people. If you're really using it and not resisting it. So I don't know how you've thought about it, but I feel it's actually a very positive thing. Also, I had an, a kind of vision of the people who are dying, although it's an awful death kind of way to go, but a lot of people are on ventilators, um, but that they were just sliding out of the body and then they were being like uh, caught or welcomed in these kind of arms of many, many beings, like a gentle transition with ease with no fear. And so it was a kind of an enlightening experience for a lot of these beings who were, were leaving this way. So I don't know, but that's what I saw. So any other comments on that? You know, one hand up, uh, Claudia, I'm going to unmute Claudia. Hi. Hi. So I just wanted to say that this whole conversation to me feels like the new normal, like everybody's talking about the new normal. And I feel like what the quantum healing collective has created and like it's taking momentum now is this like conversation of transformation. Like it's no longer like very, very woo woo stuff. Like you, the way you say it is like, very, like this is the new science. Like this is the way life is. Like, why is there a woo-woo weirdness question about it? Like, it feels very normalized to me. And yeah, that's just how I see after the pandemic. Like, this yeah. is the new normal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like the old reality will just seem um, kind of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it doesn't make sense anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we've needed the great polarization we're seeing in politics now. Um, that that has precipitated a lot of stuff coming up and it, being able to see the dominator victim patterns. You know, almost like that had to happen so that we would be able to get to the next stage and get beyond that unconscious feeling of being dominated or un disrespected and so forth. So. And of course, being sequestered with the COVID stuff, I think now the sense of it being released for so many people that they've just latched on, it's over. That's fed into the, um, the Black Lives Matter movement and the demonstrations. It's like, boom, you know, everybody's, let's get out there. Um, so unfortunately, I think there's going to be a second wave of infection from it, but um, it's an interesting wave you know. Joe, I see Joe's hand up. Thank you so much, Penny. So much amazing info, like so many, so many downloads. I was thinking to myself about how he said like this thing created global consciousness. And in my mind, I've always said that something from outside of us, foreign from the human species that is far more intelligent and deceitful than us has to come here and make us all realize that we have to work together and forget the identities that we've all built surrounding our 
looks and our behaviors and our cultures. And then we'll all have to like, it's like the movie Independence Day, like no joke, like the aliens came. Yeah, and then I was every, thinking that might be it too. You know, like every <laughs> country's on the phone, like, yo, I'm sorry about all this bullshit we've been dealing with for all these years, but we all need to work together because this thing's gonna kill our ass. And I feel like that's what need, and, I, and like to your point, it goes away for a minute, and then all of a sudden it comes back and then it mm -hmm. goes away. I feel like we're pushing ourselves frequency wise to a place where we right. attract that mega moment where something shows up and it's like, listen, if this thing didn't work, get ready for the next one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, I feel like if we don't start waking up and I see people doing it like this group and, and I hear, I've heard conversations with people that have blown my mind because I, it, it, I can see the change happening in human consciousness on a micro level. But at a macro level, which is what we, I guess, all consider our news media and the stuff that the general wave of feeling is, like this outside of this group, that's the stuff that would have to have that mega change. Like, we'd have to see these conversations happen on ABC to yeah. start having like a global conversation of like, wow, transformation is impo like possible in this way. And I feel like if we don't start making that shift, we're going to keep getting waves of like these more detrimental things to start waking human consciousness up. Mm -hmm. Am I, am I accurate? Like, does that sound I think something? So. I think that's accurate mm. um, because it's time. Mm. What I was getting too, I, and I've had this for a couple of years, but this year it was like right there. This is the year of choice mm. that you choose how you want to be do you want to agree with fear and be back in your old belief systems that give you false security mm -hmm. okay you're gonna go down you know, basically it's totally if you want to stay in the transformational side and open up and grow and use the energy and adapt yourself and adapt yourself and adapt yourself to each new wave mm. and stay centered in your home frequency of your soul mm. um, it's gonna lightning fast transform you Mm, I totally but see the that. people who go who choose on the the fear side it's not over they'll they get chances to choose constantly but that it's almost like the present moment you have a choice in this present moment of how you want your reality to be and it's in the present moment yes so yes. there's no future time where you're going to make a choice that i can do this for a while longer and stall because later i can make a choice yes because mm. there's no more later it, it's I really totally weird to get your mind around it. Yeah, but I see what you're saying because it's like it, you have to, like, I, I totally get this. And this may come on. I don't know how people feel in the group about this, but I have a general sense that everybody's not going to hate me after I say this. But I understand that there is a disease going on that is dangerous, but I also understand myself and how I take care of my body. And I also, I listen to my body. And I'm, co I'm conscious to the fact that I could be a receptor i could be someone who could help heal this thing because i can heal it on my i feel i could heal it on my own so i make choices like going to the grocery store without wearing a mask or going places without wearing a mask and i've had people ask me like i had a woman tap me on the shoulder and she like was like how did you get in here without a mask and i said i walked in and i smiled at people and i waved and i had conversations and i acted like life is okay now i'm not blind to the fact that bad things are happening, that this disease exists. But I'm in a place right now where I'm like, I think we need to start making some choices about how we're thinking about this on a level of the fear side of it. Like I can go to the grocery store and still be petrified of every person around me, but is it going to go away if I do that? Or are we just going to keep creating a space where we allow ourselves to get more and more afraid of one another? And then we're not healing at all because we're not spending time with one another and we're not learning about anything new. And then we're actually closing our global circle like you talk about that are around us and we're closing it in, closing it in, closing it in. And I feel like there's going to have to be this movement of people just being like, listen, I, I'm, I can't be afraid anymore. I'm going to take a shot and I'm going to be friendly and smile and I'm not going to go at it like with this like half heartedness. I'm going to go in full heart. And that's what I've been doing. And I feel like I, I've seen a couple people look at me like, wow. And I'm not saying I'm like, like this big movement person, but I feel like people are like, wow, I think maybe I could give that a shot and it might be okay. You know, I don't know if that's crazy to anybody, but. Well, I think it's, it's positive for you. And I also feel like there's a way I, I wear a mask when I go out because mm. um, it's not that I'm afraid of anybody. 
Right. But it's that it's a sign that I'm taking care of myself and other people, just mm -hmm. that I'm respectful. I understand that. And, um, and it is a weird thing that it's so invisible, you can't really tell that you can spread it by talking, you know. Mm. And um, uh, so I'm not afraid, but I'm in my home frequency. But I'm, it's like, you know, they say, praise Allah, but tie your camel to the post, right? <laughs> you know, that you can be in that, that higher level consciousness and you're still in the physical world and you don't want your camel to run away. You know, you've got, there that, are certain yeah. physical things to do. Hmm. And it's a, um, a both and hmm. to me, right? So that's the way that. I hold it. But then, you know, I've had lung problems all my life. So that's, you know, part of like, I'll just take care of myself. And I love until that. I know that it's really past, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. no biggie. I like that to me very much, very much. So different ways, you know, mm -hmm. to, to work, but without judgment, which allows that right. growth to happen. Right. Because for me, it's like I get that totally. Like I would never be like, "Well, you're crazy for still wearing your mask." In my mind, and right. I'm like a hundred percent. Like that makes one thousand percent sense to me, and I would never say otherwise. You know. But I think that there's a lot of like, to your point, the egos get involved and it's like, wait a minute, we all have to do the same thing or it's all <laughs> going to fall apart. And I don't, and I, and I feel like we need to right. start just understanding that, yeah, this, the excitement, like you said, the diversity mm -hmm. makes excitement. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. If we all were just like these gray beings with big eyes and we were like these skinny <laughs> and like that, life would suck, <laughs> you know, it's cool to see all these different faces on here, you know? So, right. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so, and I know from living in Florida with, um, you know, a lot of the really like bikers and stuff like that, where yeah. you don't dare say anything to anybody in a market or you're going <laughs> to you get whacked, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So just live and let live kind of thing. Totally. So. Uh, well, thank you so much, Penny. And uh, <laughs> just amazing information. Which I'm so grateful to have you here at our group. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Anybody you, else? We're, we're, uh, we're kind of coming up on time. So if sure. you want to leave us with, do you have any, like, anything you want to leave with? Any, anything that's coming to you? Any message? Uh, well, there is, um, you know, I always do this diamond light meditation. I'm not going to lead it now, but I'll tell you how to do it. And that you imagine that standing behind your back mm. is your diamond light self. It looks like you but it's totally transparent, has no blockages, no fear. It is the sort of symbolization of the soul. It has all wisdom and it's connected to all other beings. And you imagine that it puts its hands on your shoulders and that you can feel that frequency. And then you can start to gently adapt yourself to that frequency. And then as you get close to the, the vibration, that part of you, that diamond light self steps inside or slides inside and starts to match up with your physical body part for part so you get a diamond light brain inside your physical brain you get a diamond light eyeballs inside your eyes diamond light heart inside your heart diamond light bone marrow you know inside your bones and just scan through your body and put the diamond light counterpart like the inner blueprint into everything your blood whatever and then sit there as, and let it take over and say, I don't know what I'm doing, but you do. So teach me, help me, help me clear my brain, do whatever needs to be done in this body to heal old things. And as it starts to do that, you'll fall into it. And then you start to suddenly realize, oh, wait a minute, I am the diamond light body. And I am here now. And I know what I'm doing. And then you can go into all the cells and say, I'm here now with you. You don't have to be afraid. I'm going to give you good guidance. And you go into every part of your body and do that. It's such a powerful meditation. And then you can go out beyond your skin and fill up your field of your ball with the same vibration. And sit in it for a while. you know, And, and do that every day and your body will start to get the idea and the feeling state of that clear high frequency energy and it'll melt away all those memories of contraction 
It's an amazing experience. You can even, you know, have your eyes open and drive as the diamond light body. <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing. So thank you. You can try that out. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for inviting me. <laughs> so what we do now is Kristen reads, uh, it's a dedication of merit to people who are awakening at this time. Oh, right. One second. Okay. Um, so we dedicate the merit of this meeting to all of those who are awakening at this precious time. May our efforts to better ourselves help shift planetary consciousness from fear into love. May this energy ripple out into the world and awaken those with closed hearts illuminate closed minds and inspire all to live within the presence of compassion and generosity.